everybody, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we are going to get into a video about these amazing colourful candles. Now in front of me you can see some beautiful ones that I've already started to do. Uh, those ones are actually my grapefruit ones and these are not for me because as most of you know all of my candles don't have colours at all anymore but these are actually for the Pride Festival. So this is not for my company, this is for my daughter's company Honey Blue You and um, she will We'll actually be selling them in Sydney at the Pride Festival. I'll be there as well so if you want to come down and say a big hi um, come over there and I think that's around the 19th 20th I think it's the 20th actually um, of May 2023 uh, um, so come down and see us there but today I thought look I'm going to show you my process and as you can see I do have the wood wicks and usually I don't use them but I did have lots of them left over so I thought look let's just do them and I have dozens and dozens of these amber jars that I thought look we need to use these up and they'll be just absolutely perfect for somebody to take home um, at the pride festival so like I said if you're over there come and say a big hi and um, I will be in the colorful stand with my daughter my daughter's stand is a bright pink colorful stand and as I said her um, company is called honey blue you so I'm sure that you would love to come over and say hi but let's get in the rest of the video I'm going to show you the wicks I use we'll talk about the circumference of the jar and I'm also going to be doing a little testing I do have a testing um, candle to the side because I've actually made some of them which um, they're actually these ones here so you'll see that they're in a different sort of color um, those ones frosted a bit and then I had to uh, play around with the waxes a little bit so I've joined two waxes together to be able to um get these beautiful colors because when you're using soy often it will just frost and it's no good so unfortunately um, the real thing to make them perfect is adding a little bit of paraffin uh, wax so that's what I've actually done I think it's like three percent so it's not much at all it's 97 percent soy wax in here but that's what you can do if you need to uh, try and get some colors happening and most of them that you see in the shops will have a small paraffin blend in them um, just to make the colors stay gorgeous but anyway let's get going and um, I'll show you exactly what I'm up to so we always start with our wax in here so I use a slow cooker I don't have a fancy thing at all everybody so this is like a $21 slow cooker and four years later I am still using this it works a treat I have no problem with it and the handles here don't get that hot so you can actually pick it up with your hands but if you're sensitive then definitely use gloves and um, always think of safety first everyone you can scoop it out as well I used to actually scoop it out just with like a measuring cup as well that's another way and then my scale is like you can see here and you can see how messy it is because I spilt all of the wax last night I spilt a massive uh, one liter amount of wax on the ground but inside here um, I've already got my colors so they're just getting down to the right temperature and here this is actually orange so um, I've put in some orange dyes I'm going to show you the dyes that I'm using today um, there's lots and lots of options so I'll go through the options every everyone knows um, exactly the options we can use but this one's almost ready we will start pouring this but then I'm going to go through a few things um, and I hope this really helps you make successful candles all right everyone so to make candles we need a few things so definitely one of these this will be your best friend it's an infrared um, thermometer so super good all you need to do is it's got like a little trigger here you click that and you'll see numbers will come up on the screen and it's going to tell you your temperatures so this is absolute game changer it is definitely better than the metal one that you stick inside the wax you can use it for so many things um, I've had mine for maybe two years uh, still going good I've never replaced a battery yet uh, so now inside here um, these ones here also are the wooden wicks I'm using I actually use um, the wood wicks from aroma they're called pro wood wicks and this is the size that we're using so 12 millimeter um, size and I've worked out that this will fit these jars so the 12 millimeter will fit up to around a 6.9 um, millimeter jar and I'll show you exactly what I mean with that um, because you need to measure your jar to find out the wicks and then of course you need to test um, here's another one we're going to 
to just double test this one again this was one I did a few days ago it's like three quarters full so I'm going to turn that one on soon I have already tested these um, in separate jars before I started of course making them all uh, these groovy little things and um, these actually help you cut the wicks so I'll show you cutting the wicks later um, these are wick scissors so and I think I actually got these from Aussie Candle Supplies I think if not aroma and you know candle supplies there's so many of them they all sell them then with the wick clips basically it comes like this it's going to come with a little clip and then you push the um, wick inside that the wood wick so that's basically how they come and now something else I've started using lately is this amazing stuff this is a UV stabilizer all you need is like half a percent approximately half a percent so you don't need much at all I just put a tiny little scoop um, into it I just honestly I use the end of like the scissors or something and just tap that in and then of course you need your dyes and waxes so today we are actually using a couple waxes so I'm using coconut soy wax and that's from pure candle supplies and then I'm using three percent of the pure candle supplies pillar um, wax now in the pillar wax that actually has uh, 20 percent um uh, paraffin but if you break the paraffin down because like I said I'm only using a small percent so I'm literally only using two to three percent of paraffin because it's already in the pillar wax so that's you know and if you can kind of work out that 95 percent or more of my wax that I'm using today is coconut soy and the paraffin's just there to hold in that little bit of color if you don't want to use paraffins at all um, use soy and just try and use the UV stabilizer and see how you go my daughter said she didn't care she was happy to put the paraffin in so it just depends on your company and what your company wants but you know honestly most um, you know when you read a candle and it will say um, a soy blend that usually means soy blends can have um, you know a paraffin in it so and you can usually tell because it gives a bit of a shiny look and it holds the color colors much better so anyway that's a little bit about it and make sure your room is around 23 degrees if it is um, cooler than that what can happen is that's when you get the frosting on the candles sometimes it just happens I mean it's just wax it's natural wax it just just what happens but if you keep your um you know like I said your environment to a warmer climate you know sort of like a warmer thing put your heater on or whatever you're going to do I don't heat up any of these jars I don't do any of that it takes too much time for me but like I said I keep my room at around 23 degrees so that's a bit of a tip to try and eliminate uh trying to you know a limit you know you know what I mean <laughs> my words are so jumbled today but anyway you know what I mean just trying to limit um, any excess you know issues that we might have with making candles so now well I'm going to hope that my wax is ready and we'll get pouring on that but before that I'm going to just go over and show you exactly how you measure up your jar so that you can find the right wick all right so now I do have my amber jar in front of me and what we want to know is the circumference from one side of the inner part of the jar to the other side of the inner part of the jar and as you can see my ruler is messy with plaster on it but that's okay we're just measuring so if you basically sit it on here um, you're going to see that it's like if we kind of pull it back to here you're going to see that it's almost uh, six centimeters across so that will give you a guide now if you go onto a lot of websites so basically for aroma for this 12 millimeter it says it will fit up to like 6.9 um circumference of a jar basically but even though this is almost six this one um, is better because coconut soy needs a little bit a wax uh, sorry a wick that is a little bit bigger so that's really important um, some soy waxes need to go down a wick sometimes you'll get other ones that need to go up a couple sizes a wick so this is only a guide and then from there you need to test but if you go and look on any site so if you buy a jar um, have a look on that website and pretty much nearly all the websites will say the guide wick that we recommend is this wick and then you can sort of go and think it usually I would buy one under one over and then the one they suggest so I would buy the three to test and then see how you go but sometimes you may need to wick up wick down 
like I said, it's one of those things and every fragrance oil can really change the way um, that it works as well. And like I said, we're going to light this one. I'll give you an idea as well. And you really want the melt pool to have a full melt pool to burn. You really want it to take two and a half, three hours. That's pretty normal. If it starts to burn within one hour, it means that the wick's too big and you probably should be wicking down. Uh, so that's just a bit of an idea. Or if the flame's super high, you're getting black soot, it means it's the wick is too big, you need to wick down. And the reason we say that is we're using glass jars or concrete jars. Please remember that you may actually damage the integrity of the jar with too much heat. So that's why it's really important to test because if you have one that is really big, the wick could be really big, it could make the jar get so hot that it could crack it or explode the jar. So that's why we say testing all the time. I am in the process still of designing, um, you know, a new candle uh, form and I will actually put it on Patreon and that form is a guide that everyone can use to just test your own things and you'll be able to fill out the form for yourself because I noticed that a lot of candle forms that you see on the market or books, they are really hard to understand and when I started making candles, I did not understand them at all. So that's why I've decided to do that just to help some people out. So if you're on my Patreon, just go over and um, check that one out. And I'm sorry I have not done lots of videos, but I promise I am getting back into there. Unfortunately, I had a lung infection. So anyway, things were just crazy, weren't they? But anyway, like I said, let's get on to this next one. I'm very excited to see how this orange one goes. All right, so I have tested um, my beautiful wax. It is at 44 degrees. Uh, we're talking Celsius here, everybody. Uh, so now all I'm going to do is literally just pour it in. The main thing is you must pour it in slow, give it a bit of a mix before you started, um, and then we want these looking perfect. Um, these ones are 200 gram candles, but um, the reason I'm not measuring each one is I know that lip, that I'm pouring it to is 210 so they're probably going to get just a little bit extra which is okay isn't it and I know that this probably doesn't look very orange but I promise you it will turn out beautiful and um, orange and I do have little labels um, just in masking tape on them that says what it is even though I'll know because the colors because my daughter this is my daughter's company so she's making the labels herself I've just told her what she needs to have on them. I'll put all the um, safety warning stickers on the bottom of them for her. Um, and as I said, I will actually be helping her anyway um, at the Pride Festival. So we will see. I may need to make another little tiny bit just to add that one there. But these ones are done, everybody. And you can see these ones turned up beautiful blue. So we'll come back in a couple hours. We will see how the orange goes. We're also going to make a strawberry um, champagne one and a couple other ones as well. We're going to make more of an earthy one, I think, as well. But I know these ones are going to go super fast. So look how beautiful and colourful they are. So anyway, these ones are done for now. And like I said, we're going to come back. Hello everybody, we are back. You can see that I've done quite a few of these. Uh, I do have to definitely use the heat gun over a few, but they're pretty good. I even did have a couple extra jars, so we've done those. None of these have, um, by the way, had the heat gun over them. So that's literally how they've come out. They've, they've adhered really well to the jar. Um, coconut soy really does do that. That's one thing I've noticed. It's pretty good. Um, and I'm doing the pink one at the moment. So we're doing a strawberry cream. So at the moment we do have here a grapefruit. Um, this one's grapefruit and fig. This one's an orange dew. And then we do have um, lemongrass in this one here. And next we'll go on to do the strawberry ones. So, but I did want to come back on here just to tell you something that I've changed. I started, um, as we know, we started using these. But after testing, I have definitely noticed with one particular one, I had to change them because um, in between I do a bit of testing. So with this particular one here, this one here is an eight millimeter pro wood wick. So, and it looks, I know you're going to look at this and you're going to go, look how small that is compared to the jar. But you know, the old saying, um, you know, it's not the size of the wick, is it? Um, you know, 
It's how it performs in the jar. Um, no laughing, friends. But anyway, this small little wick um, does do, you know, an amazing job of making the melt pool um, reach for my testing. So when I actually went back and did a, a little bit of um, lemongrass again, I definitely noticed with this particular one here, after two and a half hour, probably actually no, probably three hours, right on the three hours, I think, it reached the melt pool right to the edge. So that's what you want. And I did notice in lemongrass in particular, when I was using this particular um, wick, which is the size, it's actually two sizes up. Uh, within an hour, it was a full melt pool. And that's not really good because then you know the jar's just going to get too hot and compromised. So we have to get away from that one. So we've definitely decided this is the one. But um, as we all know, we will be doing some testing in between. I have already pre-made a strawberry cream one. So I'll do a bit of testing and um, show you what that one's like as well. So, And all you need to do with your testing is, you know, look... Just do one extra jar and, you know, look, at the end of it, you can get the wax out of it, throw it away if you don't want it, and then use that same jar again for your next testing so you're not wasting lots of jars. Just freeze the, you know, if you actually freeze the contents um, first, then you can literally just shake the jar and it should just pretty much tip out. Anyway, but that's, um, I do have another video showing that. But like I said, this is the wick for now. So it is definitely the 8mm times 130mm um, from Aroma. I've got these and like I said, this is the Pro Wick. Another tip that you can actually do if you really want. So, you know, if you've got this and you think that's too big, you can definitely cut a bit off. That That's just a bit I cut off down the side. And I used to do that sometimes, trim down um, some of the woods, you know. So, but of course, once again, you have to test um, a disclaimer. This is only what I do. Please think about, you know, the way you want to do them. Nobody else is right but you because at the end of the day, you know, you will have done your own due diligence and your own testing, so you'll know. Um, but, you know, because there's lots of people, even when I do a video, they often come back and say different things. But, you know, I know in the end I've tested as best I can uh, and that's, you know, that's what the most important thing is, everybody. Um, just make sure that you're happy with your product before you let it out the door. Uh, even if you're doing wholesale for another person, it doesn't matter. You're still responsible because you're making it. Um, anyway, but like I said, we have done this bit. Let me um, go and double check if our next uh, one is ready. And of course, at the end, I'm going to zoom over all of these. Please ask me a question. Leave it in the description. Um, sorry, in the comments box down below. Uh, and I'll always answer your questions and hopefully I can try and help. But as I said earlier, if you were to do a yellow like this, you are never, ever going to achieve this with just soy on its own because it's very, very rare that you can use soy on its own and it's going to keep a colour um, without frosting and things like that because it's just known for frosting. Um, but as I said, you know, I basically what I do with mine is, you know, it's got a tiny bit of paraffin, so a very small amount. But usually I would not use paraffin for my own product. So please, just so that you know, uh, any candles I sell on Nelson Soapery site do not have any paraffins at all. But my daughter didn't care about that. She was like, that's fine. She was happy to have that in her product. But of course, for myself, my products are more, you know, they're obviously, they're paraffin free and the same as most of my products are vegan as well. So just depends on where your company's going and kind of, you know, um, your target market. Whereas my daughter's target market is more fun, funky and, you know, just a fun product. And plenty of people use paraffin, so um, don't be scared if you want to use it. Just have a go and see. But as I said, I usually don't use it. But for these ones that we're doing for Honey Blue U, um, that's fine. And um, we'll get going, won't we? So let me go and check the other one and we'll see how we're going. And I'll bring it back and show you what I'm up to. 
So here they are my friends. So like I said we've got this gorgeous um, blue one and you can see I've just put these little um, masking tape and written what they are on there because my daughter Emily will want to know uh, what they are because she's actually making the labels not me. Um, and then we've got you know the yellow in the middle so we've got obviously we've got um, a canary yellow then we've got the purple orange um, and then there's some more yellow ones here then we do have these red strawberry ones and the last ones here are going to be forest green so the red ones obviously they're still they're actually wet they haven't finished drying but um, these ones here I'm going to go over with the heat gun I went over with the heat gun too early and that made them look rough and messy but usually they're beautiful and smooth uh, and when everything's finished this is basically what they look like they'll look beautiful and smooth so I hope you have enjoyed this video um, as I said but I'm going to come back in just a minute show you how I actually use the clippers uh, just to clip off these but they're not solidified yet so we might actually come back in the morning I'll show you how I do that and I'll go over of course the last ones the green ones because we're going to be doing those ones but I hope you have enjoyed a little bit of behind the scenes watching me uh, make some candles and see what I'm up to um, at the moment all right everyone this is the last one for the evening as i said um this is green so hopefully i pour it all in and i don't make a big mess you can actually use some of those amazing little pancake uh ones as well you've probably all seen them around uh and basically you just got a little trigger on it and then you don't make mistakes but for me i don't have one of those so I'm just doing what I can at the moment with what I have um, and that's okay isn't it we all don't mind we all start somewhere and you know all these years later several years later I'm still doing it this way um, you get really fast at it too let me tell you no matter what you have to use uh, you'll just get really fast at it so don't ever think oh such and such has this really great uh, machine and I wish I had it um, because you know before you know it you'll be up to the same level as they are so it's just a little bit about you know doing what we can with what we've got so you can have the cheapest thing as long as you're creative uh, and then you can make something super duper fun so we will put these ones in and as I said then we've got green red orange yellow purple um, and I didn't realize but one of my daughters told me that um, that the different colors are meant to mean different things um, with the flags so that actually really interested me I thought oh that's really interesting to know uh, so I'll try and learn a bit more about that um, I always like to learn new things and um, you know uh, see different things that people believe in or um, people belong to the different groups that they belong to because it's really interesting all of us make up the world and uh, make the world a bit more fun don't we if we're all a little different so let me just pop these ones in here as I said we'll pop the green ones at the back I just kind of push them to the back each time and I hope you can see me doing these ones because they're super fun um, I'm just going to add a little bit more in each of these because I have a little bit extra. I might actually have to go and make another batch. I do remember that I didn't make as much as I wanted to make, um, which is fine. But I do have lots of other ones that I can make and, um, and I will have to fill up all of these. And then I do have four more big jars. Anyway, that's it for tonight, my friends. We will come back and see everything in the morning. Hey everybody, it is the next day and I've just put this green one here so I can show you how I actually use these clippers. So I do need to just go over a couple of them with the heat gun, which I haven't done yet, but they are all finished looking a bit beautiful. So all you're going to do is get the clippers and you can see, uh, if I show it that way, you can see how it's like opened. Uh, so you just open it like a pair of scissors. So it really is a pair of scissors, but you don't hold it up that way. You actually hold it so that this piece here is kind of flat. So if we 
turn this around and hopefully you can see and then you're just going to go like a centimeter above the wax and then cut it and then basically that's what it's going to look like so hopefully that just shows you it's pretty simple we will do um a few of these ones as well i know you can't see above that little bit there but um i'll pop that one back in there and um and then i'm going to do uh some big um ones as well now one thing to notice when you're using wood wicks they do not light like a cotton wick sometimes you may have to light it three times um, because it's like a fire it tries to burn itself out um, but it will light so like sometimes I have ones that might take three or four goes to light but then you know don't stress I promise you it will light um it's not like you know cotton wick and they just pretty much light straight away uh, there is a little bit of a difference but uh, I'm sure that, you know, once you get going with them, that you'll like them. Um, and as I said, I'm only using them because I have lots of them left and that way we're sort of finished. But I'm on to one more line of green and then I am finished. But I hope you have really enjoyed today. I have definitely made this like a tutorial and put all the extra bits and pieces that you need to know in here. But of course, do ask me. I'm happy to um, answer any questions if you have any more um, questions uh, along the way. But otherwise, come and visit us at the Honey Blue You uh, tent in Sydney. Uh, like I said, around the 19th, 20th, I think it's actually the 20th um of uh, may 2023 i'm a bit vague because my daughter has all of that we are actually doing a road trip up there which will be very very exciting anyway i uh, hope you have an amazing day and i'll see you next time bye friends